Hey, and welcome to another episode of Salvation Today. We've got another amazing program for you today. On set with me today is a very good friend of mine, a powerful evangelist. His name is Paul Maurer. You don't want to miss this episode, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the broadcast. Welcome, my friends, to another episode of Salvation Today. I am so excited that you guys are joining us today on the program. You know, we love evangelism here on Salvation Today. That's what this program is all about. It's about spreading the good news of salvation, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so it is always a pleasure for me when we get to have an evangelist, somebody who is called to spread that message around the world, and it is always exciting for me to have someone on the program with us who does just that. Joining us today is my good friend, Evangelist Paul Maurer. Paul, it's great to have you on the program. Thanks, Chris. It's good to be here, man. Yeah, man. It's a blessing. Evangelist Paul Maurer is doing crusades, traveling around the world. Um, tell us a little bit about what you're up to, what God is doing, and uh, what, what's coming up next. Yeah, sure. So about five years ago, I launched my mission called Cover the Earth. And so it's based off of, based off of Habakkuk 2.14, about God's glory covering the earth as the waters cover mm. the sea. So my heart is just the world. Amen. You know, I was a youth pastor for many years, and then God was shifting my heart towards missionary work. I was actually a missionary in China for 15 months. Yeah. And then that led into being trained by Daniel Kalenda at Christ for Nations. And then... Things just kind of blew up from there. And <laughs> so I've been all over the world, Chris. I literally just got, got back from a four month long ministry trip all over Europe. I was in Bulgaria, Hungary, Ukraine, Kenya twice. Wow. And God has just been pouring out his spirit. We're seeing tens of thousands of unreached people come to Christ. We're seeing so many healings, and it just shows that Jesus is alive. Amen. Now, one quick testimony this happened in Hungary. There was a lady at a church, um, she was deaf in her right ear. She came to our meeting with her son, who is uh, 16 years old, Hmm. and her son wasn't a believer. So this is very Uh, interesting. Which country was this in? This is in Hungary. In Hungary. Now, this is a church meeting, not an outreach meeting, but a a church meeting. So she came to the meeting. At the end, I equipped the people to pray for another for healing. And, but for some reason, she didn't see breakthrough. But so she came up to me. She's like, hey, you know, I'm deaf in this ear. Um, she developed an infection 16 years ago, and she, uh, she lost her ability to hear. Wow. And so... I stepped out in faith and prayed, and I prayed the first time, nothing happened. I prayed the second time, nothing happened. I prayed the third time, and Chris, as soon as I went like this and tested it out, this huge smile came on her face. She's like, I can hear, I can hear. (laughs) And the whole church just like exploded in praise to God, like, thank you, Jesus, you know? Wow. And then how you confirm the miracles, you you talk to one of their family members. So I talked to her son who wasn't even a believer, and he's like, I don't even know what's happening right now. I don't even believe in this stuff. Wow. But yeah, she was she was deaf in the ear for 16 years. Wow. And Jesus opened her ear. I mean, that's what Jesus does. Amen. And that's what we're seeing all over the world. Wow. You're seeing people get saved. Saved. Seeing people get healed. Healed. Delivered. We were just in Kenya. Yeah. uh, Ministering all over the country, even in the in the public schools. And we, we were in some public, we were, I remember one story, I was with a friend of mine. I shared the gospel. He prayed for the Holy Spirit baptism to be filled with the Holy Spirit. When he mm-hmm. prayed for the Spirit baptism to come, 15 students fell over under the power of God. They literally wow. were just laid out. And then five of them, you know, the Holy Spirit comes, it, it just freaks the enemy out. Yeah. Five of them started manifesting demonic spirits. Wow. Like growling, their eyes roll in the back of their sure. head. So we're casting demons out of them. Wow. I'll never forget, you know, normally you just tell the demons to be quiet and come out. Yeah. But this one tried talking to me and it was like, it's like, I've killed many. I've killed many. So like you get screaming at me wow. and I'm like, be quiet. I don't care how many of you you've killed. Yeah. You're coming out in Jesus name. Yeah. And it did. And it did. It has to. It has to. Because, you know, to. Chris, there's power in the name of Jesus. That's right. The simple name of it's the name of every name. Yeah. 
And yeah, there's power in his name. Yeah. And I tell people all the time, you know, we don't need to be afraid of the devil. Yes. Because greater is he that is in us. That's right. Than he that's in the world. Mm -hmm. The power of the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us. That's right. We have the power. We have the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And every knee must bow Amen. to his name. Amen, man. That's awesome what you guys are doing. Yeah. So, you know, since then, you know, so my calling is the world. I'm all over the place sharing the gospel. I'm in this. I think this year alone, I'll be in about 12 different countries. Wow. It's been... Um, but it's been to me, it's a calling. It's definitely not for everyone, yeah. but it, it's it's a calling, you know? So. so how can people get in touch with your ministry uh, follow what, what God's doing in your ministry? Yeah, sure. I have a website. It's uh, covertheearth.net, mm -hmm. um, okay. covertheearth.net. And, you know, it's got information about ministry. If you want to, if they want to keep in touch with me, they could contact me on there and so on. Sure. So you get the heart and I've got some ministry videos on there. Yeah. It's pretty exciting and stuff. And you're on social media, Facebook, Instagram, yep. Twitter. Yeah, I'm on uh, Facebook as Evangelist Paul Maurer. Perfect. Evangelist Paul Maurer. And they could come. We could connect with whoever if you want prayer or so on. So. Awesome. Yeah. That's great, man. Well, I want to encourage those of you that are watching at home. You know, at the end of our program, we, Paul and I, are going to lay hands on your prayer request. Amen. And we're going to believe God for your miracle in Jesus' name. And as you've heard now... God is doing using Paul in powerful ways to see people get healed, to bring healing and deliverance to many people. And so we want to pray for you. Send in your uh, prayer requests to info at chrismichelson.com. We're going to print those prayer requests out. And at the end of the program, we're going to personally lay hands on your prayer requests and believe God for your miracle in Jesus' name. And so... Paul, I'm really excited about that, but I want to hear, mm. it's amazing to hear how God is using you now, you're traveling all over the world, you're preaching the gospel, but I know you weren't born an evangelist. I mean, no. God, I was born into sin, actually, <laughs> <laughs> but God had an amazing plan for your life, yeah. and I would love to hear your story. I know a little bit about uh, a lot of times people go through religious things in their life, they're born in more of a religious system. Sure, yeah. We've talked about that in the past. And yep. so I want to hear how God brought you out of uh, kind of a, a spirit of religion yeah. and into a spirit of relationship yeah. with Jesus. How sure. did that start? You know what, Chris? Um, my my father's side of the fame is Catholic. Okay. So he grew up Catholic. That's all he knew. Yeah. A very dedicated Catholic church. And so I grew up Catholic. I was baptized as an infant in the Catholic church. And I don't, to be honest, it was so long ago. I don't remember anything until about four or five years old, but okay. I had a great uncle that was a Catholic priest. So that was kind of in my family. And so my parents got involved in the charismatic Catholic prayer movement. They started discovering the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Wow. And, and that's when they really started to grow a lot in their faith. Okay. And then the Lord started speaking to them about some things like praying to Mary, like, hey, don't pray to Mary, pray to Jesus. Yeah, amen. You know, things like that. And then the Lord led them to leave the Catholic Church. And so my family, Chris, we actually had a church in our home for a year or two. Mm -hmm. And my my father, I remember, I do remember this time. And my father would pull the Bible and teach us stories from the scripture. And you know, he'd pull his guitar and have some simple worship. And we had a tambourine going in our living room, you know. And they were just kind of praying about where to go. You know, yeah. they, they know that God had moved. The, and don't get me wrong. I believe Catholics love Jesus. And there's people that really love God. But, you know, God was le leading us somewhere else to really grow in our faith mm -hmm. and to take that next step in Jesus, you know. So um, we, we went from, we had church in our home for about a year or two. And we went from that to a spirit-filled charismatic church okay. and that's where we felt and it was a complete difference i'm mean, talking from catholic to this pentecostal charismatic church but that's what i i grew up in yeah and to be honest chris like when i was younger i wanted to know god i wanted to connect with god but he felt so far away wow and i wanted to connect but i didn't know how and i found myself loving god but also in my elementary years into my teenage years, just kind of on the fence, spiritually speaking, mm -hmm. I could have went either way. Like I kind of love God, but I really love the world. I wanted yeah. to be popular at school. I wanted to go to party with the friends. I right. wanted to look at pornography and just do stupid stuff that was destroying my life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I found myself just with addictions in my life. I found myself away from God. And the whole time I'm going to church. Wow. Chris, I'm going to church every Wednesday, every Sunday. You know, spending time with, and to me, it was more of a social thing because yeah. my friends went to church and it was fun. Like we had a fun church, Yeah, you know, but my heart was so far from God. Wow. Wow. And then, so how did that happen then from you going from, okay, 
I, I'm going through the motions. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I think a lot of people, they they are stuck in that same rut, mm-hmm. right? They're going through the motions. They go to church. They yeah. have a good place that they go. Yeah. They have some kind of desire for God, yeah. but yet they're still finding themselves stuck in the same sin, Yes, kind of going through the motions, not really on fire. What happened that caused you to go from kind of being in the norm of Christianity yeah. to being like somebody who was passionate about Jesus? Well, I'll tell you what happened, Chris. So um, I was in Sunday school. Again, I'm still away from God. Yeah. Addictions in my life. And I just was at church for my friends, a social thing aspect yeah. of it. Feeling totally disconnected to God. And in my Sunday school class, I see a video from the Browns Revival. Now, the mm-hmm. Browns Revival, just some history, if you're not aware, it, it broke out in 1995 to the, about the year of 2000. Okay. And 5 million people, now this is before social media, this is before like Facebook and, and where, where information can travel so rapidly. Right. Um, never advertised. And in five years, like several million people flew into this church from all over the world. Wow. And it was all word of mouth. So I saw this video and this 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 girl's just talking about just, just God touching her. And I remember she physically, she was just shaking under the power of God. And wow. I remember looking at that and being like, that's strange. But something inside me said, that's real. Yeah. And so my family planned a trip down to Pensacola. And we were, you know, my father had a decent job, but I'm from a very small town. Mm-hmm. So wages are not very high in those areas, but mm-hmm. he had a manager's position. So we didn't have a ton of money growing up. Right. You know? Right. So so we planned a trip down to Pensacola, which was a big deal. My father had to save up for a long time. Wow. But it's probably the greatest investment into my life he could have made. Wow. So we got on the revival, Chris. Um, and I get up, we get up at like five o'clock in the morning to get in line. Okay, at the church, at a revival. People would get up before the sun came up to wait in line all day. Wow. And you, you live in Orlando, so yeah, you know what it's, it's like in, in the hot sun. Yeah. They would wait all day in the hot Florida sun to get into a 7 p.m. church service. Wow. They would take, they would be so sweaty, they would take a break in line to go take a shower at the hotel and then come back and get back in line. <laughs> because something was happening. Yeah. And I remember thinking like, this is not a normal church. Right. This is not a normal revival. Like something significant's happening here. Yeah. And so I walk in the church, the church is full within like two or three minutes, just because so many people are trying to get in and, and there wasn't one empty seat in that whole place. And I get in there, Chris, and I feel this powerful worship. Like I've never heard before. Like Mm -hmm. it was actually anointed. Like I felt like God was, I was encountering God, even though I was still like in my sin. Yeah. I felt God kind of drawing near. And then at Steve Hill, the evangelist came up. Mm. And he just preached the gospel. I mean, he was speaking to lots of Christians. Yeah. You know, because a big part of the revival was getting the church right with God. Right. So it's like, if you're going to be a Christian, you've got to give Jesus your entire life. Yeah. You can't be addicted to pornography. You know, he said you you could be you could be baptized in the middle of, of being baptized and you could go to hell. You can go to hell with a, a wafer in your mouth. You know, you can. He was just very black and white, very yeah. direct but it's exactly what I needed to hear because wow. I was so hypocritical. Wow. And so, and it was also the love of God too. I mean, Steve mm-hmm. Hill's testimony, he was he was a drug addict for many years, right. got radically set free and yeah. became an evangelist. That's yeah. what God can do. Amen. So going back to the revival, Steve Hill's preaching, just a powerful message. Mm-hmm. And just on repentance, g- giving your entire life to Christ, Yeah. you know, turning from your old life and giving Jesus everything. Amen. And Chris, when he gave the altar call, you could hear a pin drop. It was mm. so intense, like in a good way. It was yeah. the love of God and the fear of God. Wow. It's like, man, God loves me way too much to yeah. keep me in that situation, to keep me in my sin, wow. to keep me in my bondage. And when Steve Hill gave that altar call, Chris, I didn't walk. I ran to the front <laughs> with tears streaming down my Come face. On. Like I was a wreck. Wow. And right through my moment, I got on my knees. And I, I prayed, I cried out to God to forgive me, and my life's never been the same. Come on. Like, I left Jesus. that place, Chris, a different person. Come on. I mean, when the Bible talks about if any man's in Christ is a new creation, yeah. you know, old things pass away, yeah. all behold, things all new. things become new. Yeah. That's what happened to me. Come on. Like, the sky was bluer than it was before. Wow. Like, the grass was, was greener than I mean, everything was different. Yeah. I mean, I was instantly set free from pornography a pornography addiction instantly set free from just religion like yeah. all of a sudden i desire to spend time with jesus i desire to spend time in prayer wow and 
it's hard. And then I went back to my public school. I started a Bible club, called it 180, like a 180 turn from sin, you know. <laughs> and, you know, it took me some time to learn to learn about the Lord more and to kind of like, hey, God just doesn't want me to repent all the time. God just really loves me. Yeah. You know, he not only loves me, but he he likes me. He likes you. Yeah. You know, so I took some time to figure that out. But it was just, it was a journey. Yeah. Of growing up in the faith, being more mature in Christ. But yeah, that one event when I was 16 years old in Pensacola, Florida, completely changed my life. Wow. It's amazing. It's beautiful what Jesus can do to somebody's life who when they just say, God, here I am. Yeah. Take me. You know, uh, I wonder too if there's people out there that are watching that, you know, they're wondering, like, how do I get out of this? How do I get out of that situation? And then also, like, how did they, how did you get from, I think before we get to that, I want to, I want to talk a little bit about how did you get from there to where you are now? You know, how did you get to, because you didn't, you didn't just start preaching the gospel right away and doing crusades right away. Like yeah. God had you on a journey as well to get to that place of like, how did God start using you? What, what was that process like? You know, there's that whole process of discipleship. Like yeah. once you come to Christ, man, you've got to get discipled. You've yeah. got to get under authority. You've got to learn and grow. And you know, the principle in the kingdom is the way up is down. Like mm -hmm. if you got want, if you want God to use you, and I know you know this, mm -hmm. if you because you've you've lived this, if you want God to use you, you've got to get as low as you can. Yeah. And you've got to serve. And then God sees your heart and yeah. then he gives you more. Yeah. And that's what happened to me. I did several internships in my 20s. Yeah, I went down to Bible school, went to Brown's Revival School of Ministry. Yeah. A great place to get equipped and to learn the Bible and learn mm -hmm. the things of God. And then I highly recommend apprenticeships or internships, yeah. just a practical way to learn the ministry. Yeah. And so, but I just served. I, and, I, and I literally thought, and even at one church, Chris, you know what I did? I cleaned toilets at a church. Oh. I was a custodian. <laughs> yeah. And in my 20s, and the whole time I was thinking, sure, I got paid for it, which yeah. I needed the money. But I can honestly tell you the whole time I was thinking it, if I'm faithful in making this restroom like as clean as it can be, yeah. if I'm faithful, God's going to see my heart and he will raise me up. And he did. And he did. And since that time, Chris, I have been amazed at the doors God's opened. I mean, he's placed me under Daniel Kalend at Christ for All Nations. Yeah. In my opinion, one of the greatest evangelistic ministries in the world. In the world. I mean, Absolutely. he's led over 22 million people to Christ. Yeah. And it's kind of a long story, but he took me under his wing, poured into me for a year at Christ for All Nations and really helped launch my ministry. Yeah. And um, yeah, just learning, you know, 40 years of insight that yeah. he got from Reinhard Bonnke and yeah. just being on that ministry changed my life. I think serving is so incredibly important. It's huge. It's huge because I was telling somebody the other day, if you don't, if you're not willing to serve somebody else. Yeah. Uh, are you really willing to serve God? Totally. You know what I mean? Because if you if uh -huh. you're willing to say, "Man, I'll do whatever it is you want me to do." Yeah. I'll clean the toilets. Uh huh. I'll do whatever it is. Yep. And God sees that you're faithful in serving that person. Mm -hmm. God will say, "Okay, he's if he's faithful with them, I know he'll be faithful with me, and faithful with yeah. the ministry that I want to give." Absolutely. To them. And I had a great mentor, Richard Crisco, that taught me that. Yeah. The way up is down. And he said, to the extent you serve in this ministry is to the extent that one day others will serve you in wow, your ministry. Come on. And I never forgot that. That's and amazing. I served my butt off. And like, <laughs> and then looking back at what God has done, yeah. he's faithful. Amen. So what if there's somebody out there that doesn't know Jesus? Mm. You know, this program airs all over the world. Mm -hmm. We have people from all different kind, kind, uh, kinds of backgrounds mm -hmm. that are watching this program. And I just, yeah. I know that there's going to be somebody out there who yeah. says, man, sure. Paul, you went through this whole life change. Right. God saved you. He set you free. Yep. How do I meet Jesus? Why don't you turn to that camera and just take the next two minutes yeah. and lead that person to Jesus? I'd be glad to. It's It'd be an honor, Chris. So maybe you're watching at home. You know, you're sitting on that couch. You're sitting on that chair. Maybe you're just flipping through the channels and you're listening to me right now. Or maybe you heard just some of this discussion. Maybe you're even a religious person. Maybe you go to church every now and then and you know about God. But maybe you have a head knowledge of Jesus up here, but you don't have him down here. Listen, Jesus wants your entire life. Mm -hmm. And if you come to him right now in this moment, if you turn from your old life, 
It's not just what you turn away from, it's who you turn to. Yeah. If you turn to Jesus right now, listen, he'll forgive every sin, he'll set you free from any addiction, he will give you peace in your mind. Or someone watching it right now, you've been dealing with anxiety and depression for many years. If you come to Jesus right now, mm -hmm. you're gonna be so set free in the moment of time when you receive Christ, he's gonna come in, he's gonna set you free and he's gonna bring healing to that depression, healing to that anxiety. So right now, if you need Jesus, I want you right now, wherever you are, to get on your knees and I want you to pray a prayer with me right now. And it's not just the prayer that will save you, it's the heart behind the prayer. You've got to want this thing from the depths of your being. And when you pray this prayer and you let Jesus in, it's going to change everything. So get on your knees right now and repeat this prayer after me. Close your eyes and just lift up your hands like this and say, Jesus, Jesus, I come to you today. I come to you today. A sinner, a sinner in need of a savior. Needs to ever save. Said, turn from my old life. Turn from my old life. And I turn to you. Turn to you. Say, Jesus, Jesus. I put my faith, put my faith and my trust, my trust in you. Say, Jesus, I receive, Jesus, I receive your, free gift your free gift of salvation. Of Thank you. Thank you for saving me now. Saving me now. And setting me free. Setting me free. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Name. In Jesus' in name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. You know, if you prayed that prayer, welcome the family of God. Amen. All of your sins have been forgiven. You now need to get plugged into the local church and be discipled just like I was when I gave my life to Jesus when I was 16 years old. Amen. Amen. My friends, that is amazing. If you prayed with Paul and you made that decision to follow Jesus, to make him your Lord, to make him your Savior, to say, you know what, I'm not going to follow any other path. I'm not going to follow my own path. I'm not going to follow the path of anyone else, but I want to follow Jesus. If you made that decision today and you prayed with him, Amen. please get in touch with us. You can reach out to us and let us know at info at chrismichelson.com and let us know that you prayed with Paul to receive Christ today. We want to stay in touch with you. And uh, Paul and I are going to come back after this short break. We're going to pray for the sick. We're going to pray for you. And I believe God is going to do miracles in your life. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this short break. If you've never received Jesus before, and you want Jesus to forgive you, I'm going to count to three. And if that's you, I want you to stay. One, two, three. Stay to your feet. Do you have a passion for missions and evangelism? And do you want to see people get saved and come to faith in Jesus Christ in some of the most unreached places on the planet? Well, join our ministry by partnering with us here at Chris Michelson Evangelistic Ministries. In the last four years, we've seen nearly one million people come to faith in Jesus Christ in some of the most difficult places near the Middle East, and we need your help. Make sure you go there to chrismichelson.com, to our website to get more information and to become a partner with our ministry. We look forward to harvesting together with you in the nations of the earth, and we look forward to hearing from you there on our website. God bless you. Welcome back, my friends. Uh, we are so excited to pray for you because we know there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. And so I can't wait to lay hands on these prayer requests. We've got them right here. Amen. We're going to lay hands on them. We're going to pray. Even if you haven't sent in prayer requests, guess what? Jesus, the same power yeah. that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, it dwells in you. It is there with you right now. It is with us right here. And Jesus is going to do miracles in your life today in Jesus' name. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to lay hands on these prayer requests. I want you at home, just lay hands on yourself as well. Mm. Close your eyes and receive your miracle today in Jesus' name. Paul, I wonder if maybe you could get us started off here and uh, just... Help us begin praying for all these prayer requests. Absolutely. And if you're if you're watching by camera, if you're watching at home, maybe you're sitting down and say, if you need a healing or a miracle in just a minute, we're going to pray for you as well. 
So, but first, I wanna, I'm going to pray for these needs. I want to build your faith yeah. because God's going to come to you. He's going to come to you. He's going to touch you. I believe that sickness is going to be gone in Amen. Jesus' name. So, Lord, we just lift up Jane. Mm. Lord, we pray for her family and marriage. God, we pray for Jesus. a breakthrough. I pray for a, a restoration of that relationship, Lord. God, I pray for um, Shalim and just an opportunity to be able to study. I pray for a wide open doors for her. We pray mm. for Mary, whose husband, Tony, has a drinking problem. He's yes. an alcoholic. We, we say, be set free in from that addiction. Jesus we break name. that addiction yes. off your life right yes. now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right now, I pray for a girl named Cinderella. She's got a, a backbone issue. We pray mm. be healed in the name of Jesus. I pray for... there's. Lord, I just thank you for every need. Every There's so many needs, Father, yes. here. And I just pray that you touch every single yes. one by the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray for a Meseret who's got a, a stomach issue. And we just speak to your stomach. Say, stomach, be healed mm. in the name of Jesus. You know, in, if, you're, if you're watching right now, I want you right now to place your hand in the part of your body that's sick. If you've got a tumor or lump, if you've got blindness, if you've got blurred vision, right now, place your hand in the part of your body that's sick. Yes. And I'm going to pray. When I pray, because Jesus heals, because Jesus loves you, he's going to yes. come to you, and that sickness is going to be gone in Jesus' name. Yeah. So right now, I take authority over back issues, yes. back pain in Jesus' name, be gone. Go. I take authority over cancer, stage four cancer. I command that cancer to leave your body yes. in the name of Jesus. Any tumor or lump, I command that tumor to yeah. shrink and come to nothing. I take authority over mental problems, mental conditions, autism, anxiety, and depression, and I command it to leave you. I, I pray that you would have the mind of Christ. Be free. No weapon formed against you will prosper yes. in the name of Jesus. I have someone here has a, you're watching, you have a breathing problem. You've got uh, asthma, a problem mm -hmm. with your lungs. Right now, God is coming to you. He's touching you. Mm -hmm. He's heal be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I pray for every condition from the top of your head to the soles yes. of your feet. Every issue, and I say right now, be God. healed in the name of Jesus. Jesus' name. Yeah, name Father, Jesus. we just thank you for each and every person watching. Yes. And Lord. we just say, be whole, yeah. be healed, be set free Ooh. right now in the name of Jesus yes. Christ, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. My amen. friends. Uh, we love having you guys on the program. Paul, thank you so much for joining uh, us. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's been a it's pleasure. An and uh, for those of you that have been uh, joining in today, we love you guys, and we can't wait to see you next time on Salvation Today. That's all the time we have, but we'll catch you again next time on Salvation Today. God bless you. This program has been made possible by the friends and financial partners of Chris Michelson Evangelistic Ministries. To learn more about Chris Michelson Evangelistic Ministries, go to our website at chrismichelson.com or write to us at P.O. Box 771102, Orlando, Florida 32877. You can email us your prayer requests by sending them to info at chrismichelson.com. And don't forget to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash evangelist Chris Michelson. 